Okay, podcast starts now. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to Stradio Lab. Welcome back. George, how are you doing? You know, it's this is we're now back on Zoom. Yeah. After three episodes recording in person uh, where we could touch each other, mm -hmm. I could kind of caress your cheek. Of course. Um, or your or kind of play with your mustache in a romantic way uh, in the middle of the episode. Now I, I can't even I feel like I can't I'm, I'm reaching out, but I can't reach you. No. And to be honest, I feel safer this way. Um, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess I was doing a lot of touching. There was just a lot of caressing in a way that was like, come on. Yeah, it was a lot a of business. I kept caressing. It was interesting. You know, we've been doing this now for almost three years and you didn't know that my style when we're in person is that I constantly caress, which I've heard is good in work environments. Yeah, no, I think that was maybe a thing, um, you know, in the 90s, I think potentially that was encouraged. Sure. If you read any business book from the 90s, there's a whole chapter about caressing your coworkers. <laughs> yeah, it's mostly about caressing. <laughs> and it's like, you know, they like to be stroked this way, like they like when you rub this part. <laughs> um, but oh, no. yeah, if you read a 2022 um <laughs> Which is about to be made irrelevant, actually. But if you read a 2022 business true. book, uh, it's about um, sort of being on Zoom and sort of uh, not touching, which is amazing. Yeah, it's uh, most of it is about not caressing. <laughs> yeah, how it's kind of do's and don'ts. Yeah, how to make a million dollars by don't not caressing. Caressing. <laughs> yeah, I actually had a, an experience that um, you know made me want to reach out and touch someone. Wow. On my flight back from Los Angeles, California. This is huge. You wouldn't this believe who was sitting right next to me. And by next to me, I mean on the other side of the aisle. Yeah. Rosie Okay, O'Donnell. I have one guess. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew it was going to be Rosie O'Donnell, but I wanted to really draw it out. It was Rosie O'Donnell. It was Rosie O'Donnell, which was actually insane. What was she like? So normal. <laughs> wow. Well, except that she was... Uh, yeah, whatever. Well, I, except that she was Rosie O'Donnell. Except that she was Rosie O'Donnell, and honestly, she actually seemed to have like a really um, healthy demeanor. Where like at least three people were like, "Oh my god, hi!" Like I love your thing, mm -hmm. and she was like, "Thank you," and it was totally normal. Whereas I was like, mm, "I'd be crankier than this." Yeah, because you're like getting on a flight. It's not like fun inherently. You're with your kid. It was like it felt stressful. Also, she like. I, I, it made me really examine my feelings toward celebrities because I was really like, I'd find myself being like, okay, pay attention to what she orders. And then it was like, why? Like, why are you doing that? <laughs> like, I was like, okay, remember that she always wants Diet Coke. <laughs> I, when I was in high school, I literally watched her vlog. I would go to rosieodonnell.com and watch her vlog updates. And when the thing happened with Elizabeth Hasselbeck, she did like, it was very proto YouTube. It was very her being like, here's what happened. And then she's wearing kind of a, you know, she's like no makeup, wearing a headband at home. Um, and she's like, you know what? I mean, ultimately, when I saw that split screen, I said, I can't do this show anymore. And like, I've had, you know, it's been good, but it's not what I expected. And I was like really eating it up. It felt so raw and personal. Wow. I mean, I will say so often on the plane, um, she was checking social media. In a way that I was kind of like, yeah. well, when you're a big celebrity, shouldn't you be like over social media? And it's like to see Rosie O'Donnell looking at TikTok, I was like, huh, now this is confusing. That, that's dark. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to say. Yeah. And here's what I'll say. Be, having been a huge fan of Rosie O'Donnell pretty much since I was conceived, I do think she doesn't have the healthiest relationship to media. Really? I think she can, she like is very aware of what people think of her. I think like... She is someone who reads the news a lot. I think it also doesn't help that she had this whole feud with Trump and then he became president. I think it's like, and for a very long time, she was truly at the center of culture. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, maybe she just, you know, it's so sad that she was, you know, a big star in the 90s because if she had been born today, she could have been the most amazing social media star. <laughs> and that's yeah, what she really wanted. It's really sad. <laughs> yeah, she really wanted that. And you know what else I'll say? Have you ever seen Smilf? No. It, it was a show, I think, on Showtime. And it was, in fact, canceled because of, like, bad workplace stuff that we can't get into. But the one season that does exist, Rosie O'Donnell literally gives an Emmy-worthy performance. And it's lost to the sands of time. Did the Emmy voters think so? You know what? They didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Huh. But this was before we were Emmy voters because of our visual podcast radio lab. 
Right. I forgot. Ever since we were granted Emmy voting power via our podcast, yeah. the world has changed. Well, <laughs> yeah. We were granted it when we just went to L.A. They were like, oh, welcome. Yeah, they're like, oh, Do you want to vote for the Emmys? <laughs> You're like, if they in LA, when they say if you are in line to vote, stay in line, they mean the Emmys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was so amazing to finally get granted that power and the perks that it comes with. I mean, every time I saw a character actor on the street, I'd say, hey, you better kiss yeah. my ass, buddy, because I could make or break you. Absolutely. Well, George, how have you been since you've been back or whatever? Can you tell me about, like, because you were coming straight from LA to like a whole family visit, just a, yes. a little briefly, like, what's that been like? I know, I know. Well, it's tough because I don't want to, you know, I'm so aware of the fact that this episode is coming out either right before Christmas or right after Christmas. <laughs> so we have to be in a Christmas spirit nonstop. I actually need to put on a Santa hat and a Jingle Bell themed jewelry of some sort. Uh huh. But I mean, there's no way around it right now. It's not even Thanksgiving. It's not Thanksgiving, but it is the week of Thanksgiving, which I think kind of counts. Yes, it's a week of Thanksgiving. And for anyone keeping track at home, I left L.A. earlier than Sam because my mom is visiting for Thanksgiving. And it's her first time ever visiting me, like not for a college graduation. Yeah. And I have to say so far, it's been a huge smash. Really? Yeah. I. She is eating it up. Matthew went and got her freshly cut flowers that he put by her by the futon that we made into her bed we still had the vogue september issue and i put it on her bedside table <laughs> so that if she wants to read the vogue september issue she can read it okay serena williams is on the cover i then put the latest new yorker on top of that so she has both literary reading material and fashion forward reading material <laughs> i put two pillows on the bed that are of different levels of plushness one is firmer and one is less firm. And then on top of those, I put two throw pillows on to kind of create a vibe. Wow. I have jam that is expensive. <laughs> I have wine that I served her as soon as she arrived at night. And then today we took a walk. Wow. So, I mean, your mom, I think, this is a really good example of the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. You know what I mean? You were so stressed out about this trip and all the lead up, the, the battles you guys have had leading up to this. Yes. Um, yes. It's been war. <laughs> it's been absolute war to the it's point been all where out war. you are treating her like a goddess and I, yes. a hotel could never do what you have done. Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, not, certainly none of the hotels we stayed at in L.A. Well, the second hotel we stayed at in L.A. could not dream of what I'm doing now. <laughs> no. And we won't. Yeah, we won't shout them out, but they did put us in. Prison cells. Uh, prison cells. <laughs> <laughs> with, with a window that went to a wall. Yeah. So there was yeah, no exactly. natural light. It was... And and once again, not the first hotel. The first hotel we loved. Yeah. And did not pay for ourselves. The second hotel that we did pay for ourselves. Honey, I have some notes. Yeah, it showed. It, sh it really <laughs> did. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, it's been truly, honestly, kind of a sleigh. Well, I love that. And I'm happy to hear it. But please start some damn drama so we have something fun to I talk know, about. We have to start. Well, you know, I actually. Oh my god, I can't believe I didn't mention this. I have huge news. Oh my gosh, what? So my mom loves plays. Okay, and she hasn't been in New York for like ten years. So I was like, what plays can I get her tickets to? So I think we're gonna go see. I think when my dad also arrives this weekend, we'll all go see. Um, the piano lesson, which is Samuel Jackson and Danielle Brooks, and it's going to be really good. It's like famous actors. It's Sam Jackson, whatever. But then I was like, I want to go. I want to go to one with just my mom and my sister before my dad gets here, and that one I can pay for, and that can be like my gift. And wouldn't you believe it? The only one that really made sense was the play "Take Me Out," that is famous for having dongs out and about, flipping and flopping on stage. Mm -hmm. And you better believe I'm seeing it with my mother and my sister on Tuesday. <laughs> wow. Um, well, that's kind of scary. I almost think we should bring in our guest and all yeah, discuss I think so the too. fallout it's, of what I just yeah, said. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> so without further ado, um, please make some noise wherever you are. Scream in your car for the one, the only, Michelle Davis. Oh Woo! my goodness. Wow. Thank you guys. Of and course. this is an amazing time to bring me in, I have to say. I, I did think you you were nodding so vigorously that I thought she has to speak up. <laughs> well, what's funny is I've never seen this play, but I, mm -hmm. of course, yeah, okay. Neither have I. Neither. Nor 
I'm going to be honest. Do I think I'm going to? Not because I Correct. have anything against Dong. <laughs> but I just, I just don't see an instance where I'm going to pay for a ticket to go to, to, to a serious play. I'm sort of a musical yeah. gal. Oh, interesting. Okay. See, my mom was like, no musicals. Okay. Okay. She said it. She was like, I want to go to a play. No musicals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's harsh. My friends all went together without inviting me, but I guess they knew I didn't want to go all last week. Um, and To take me out? Yeah. Wow. They apparently liked it. Yeah, I've heard good things. And I also feel like moms, I mean, certain moms, are they love kind of LGBTQ content on Netflix. Sure, sure. Like, yeah. And so in some ways they're more educated than we are. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> I feel like the plot line of like, well, he's a baseball player, but he's gay. That's for mom. Yeah. Oh, fully. I actually have a huge question for you guys. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you think that the play is good? Now, my question, <laughs> I'm asking this because yeah. dongs are out. So it's mm-hmm. like, yes. So it's like, do you think dongs are out? Automatic Tony. Do you know what I mean? So it's hope. interesting you say that. <laughs> but here's here's my counterpoint. Guess who won the Tony? Not one of the Dongs. That's true, but they were both nominated. But they were both nominated. But it's interesting that at the end of the day, they were like, well, a Dong is enough for a nomination, but we can't take you seriously enough to give you the award. That is true. That it's is sex absolutely negative. true. It's sex negative. Yeah, yeah it's sex negative, honestly, yeah. is what it is. And and after all Jesse Williams has been through with his Dong being leaked to the press. <laughs> Wait, have you guys seen it? Yeah. Yeah. We've I seen didn't. It. I didn't. You did it? I, I respect him. Just kidding. It just never came up. It just <laughs> never came up. You know, I only clicked it. No, there was honestly <laughs> no way to avoid it. It was like all there was over, no way to avoid like, it. text threads and Twitter. And I was like, this is, I'm not even seeking this out and it's everywhere. No, I'm actually embarrassed I haven't seen it. No, you live a wholesome life and that's beautiful. Yeah, I live in New Jersey yeah. and in New Jersey, there's no penises. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they're coming in 2020. I heard that yeah. too. I heard that they're too. They're going to introduce penises. <laughs> you know, yeah. Now the millennials are moving there. Exactly. It's the new Brooklyn. <laughs> I think they're going to, I think penises are next. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> penises and kombucha. Here yeah. it comes. Yeah. Here it comes. Um, I think, George, to what you were saying, like the LGBT plot line of the play, yeah. I think is a powerful way to, it's sort of that like something for everybody where it's like the moms get the exactly. feel good story and their sons. And the gay sons get, get the dong. dong. Um, which yeah. is so, so powerful. That's kind of what I was and what, thinking. What is your, what does your sister get though? The dong, actually. Well, dong? that's a great question. She I mean, she both. is a straight woman, she so gets yeah. she gets both. Yeah. 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 Actually, the best thing the, the the best thing you can be is a millennial straight woman because then you love LGBT plot lines <laughs> and you love dogs. Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Now you know what would be even better for all of this is if my mom also was a Grey's Anatomy fan and she knew Jesse Williams from Grey's Anatomy. Mm. I mean, then she would be in hog heaven. Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> I no, mean, yeah. you should get her hooked. I know. I know she doesn't. She, I know. I have to get her hooked on Grey's Anatomy and then she'll really enjoy it. Yeah. I'm embarrassed to say I also haven't seen that show. Really? I haven't seen it since like the seasons like one through four, let's say. Okay. And I was like, I was like, well, I'm going to be a doctor. Yeah. I don't. Specifically a surgeon. Well, that would have been your show. I Hospital shows stress me out. Mm. Yeah. Because, you know, 100%. death, et cetera. Of course. <laughs> this one, this one was more about like hooking up in the closet okay. and then someone comes in it was so and sexy. then someone comes in and, and has like a comedic ailment <laughs> where they're like I can't stop farting <laughs> yeah until like season three or whatever then it was like there's a bomb in here I know <laughs> or the two people that had like a rod stuck through them yeah. and they can only save one of classic. them right exactly that's a classic <laughs> I mean it's, it's like funny. no stakes until it's the highest stakes <laughs> yeah that show is funny it's funny to come up with like premise diseases or like premise problems like to be like yeah i guess the game of this episode is that like this person needs a head and this person needs a leg but you can't have either one like (laughs) to write for a procedural i think it would be one of the best jobs in the world i mean it's really anything goes do you guys know about that one writer who faked cancer on yes is it wasn't it on gray's anatomy i think it was on gray's anatomy because shonda had to put out a statement that's how you get into the WGA. It's the only way. 
It's the only way. Well, the biggest the biggest writing project of all is a big lie. <laughs> I mean, exact. I know it's like she's not rewarded for her imagination. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is a commitment to the craft. What I loved about her, too, is like, so she would, I think the article is in Vanity Fair, if people want to seek it out. I'm not positive. But part of her story was that she had cancer. And that's like a lot of the storylines she wrote were autobiographical. And I think it like really helped her in the room, whatever. But then she would also use the fake cancer as an excuse not to work. So she'd be like, well, I can't come, of course, with all the cancer. (laughs) (laughs) That is such a slay. I was going to say that's sort of iconic. I know. I mean, she really is mother for that. Right. To get the job and then be like, I actually can't come because, you know, cancer. The cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 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 That is genius. Um, I also want to say this was like, that's also literally the premise of the the dong on stage. Back to the dong on stage. Mm -hmm. Is that is the Sex and the City episode with Keith Jarrett. It's like Samantha's like, I'm going to make you a star because you show dong on stage. Yes. That's right. pretty much what this play is. Right. Wait, was his name Keith Jarrett? It started out as something else, and then she changed it. It was definitely two first names. Yeah. Smith. Smith. Smith? It was Smith, Smith Jarrett. Jarrett. Smith Jarrett. Sorry. Smith Jarrett. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good name. Yeah. That's a good name. It's almost as good It's also as, good as my favorite TV character name, Booth Jonathan from Girls. <laughs> who who played that person? <laughs> Yorma Tacone. <laughs> no. Oh, right. Oh the goodness. artist. Classic. The artist that Marnie hooks up with. I'm actually embarrassed to say, but I need to do another girls rewatch. Like, yeah, that show was amazing. Say what you want uh, about our girl. You are not going to have to convince <laughs> us of that. Yeah, we are versus, you are preaching to the <laughs> choir. Okay, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> two thoughts in my mind. First of all, Sam, I don't know how you've been since you've been back. And second of all, we have to address the fact that, you know, this, as I said, pre-recording, this feels like meeting my husband's my husband's work wife. Yeah. I know. I, I was noting before because you said that you have been working with Sam for the last couple of weeks in person. Mm-hmm. And I've never not seen Sam outside of the screen. <laughs> Actually. Oh my God. Is that true? Like, have you ever hung okay, out? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. There, I'm being, there was one I'm week. There was one week. Yeah. Yes. Like in the work capacity, it's been only Zoom except for one week. Yeah. But, I mean, I've also seen you in real life. We're not freaking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we even met in real life, you could argue. Yeah, the first time we met. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Was it shocking when you realized that Sam is seven foot five? <laughs> um, well, I'm 5'10", so I oh. people are often shocked to know that I'm actually a tall gal. See, I wasn't surprised at all. Yeah, you weren't surprised. <laughs> you weren't surprised. Me and Sam actually, um, in our dynamic in our um, in our workplace is like we were sort of the rule followers, the people who are like, oh, interesting, afraid of the boss, want to impress mommy, like that sort of our energy. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, for the listeners at home, we worked on Z Way together, and um, yeah. is mommy Z Way Mo- or is mommy Joe Firestone? Both mommy, Mo- <laughs> mommy is anyone that is. Even slightly above us, say, say that. Right, yeah. exactly. I mean, mommy was sometimes was director. Mommy was sometimes producers. Mommy was sometimes Ike if he was being quiet enough. Totally, <laughs> totally. You know, I'll say this: in my limited experience in the entertainment industry, you really anyone could be mommy. You kind of at any given point do not know what the hierarchy is. Exactly. And honestly. Sometimes I will think someone is mommy for a full week and then suddenly I'll get an email and their title is literally like summer intern. And I'm like, well, to me, you're still mommy. Right. Like, I'm going to keep treating you. Right. Exactly. That's so true. I think what was helpful is we actually we wrote together a lot, especially for the the second block that has just started streaming. Um, and I think Shout out. and that was because um, we liked it better because we could like not neither of us individually could have any blame. <laughs> exactly neither of us yeah. individually could have any blame and also like for some reason if we had to write something individually it would take all day but if yeah. we wrote together i i kid you not 30 minutes so <laughs> it is crazy it's like those sat problems where it's like if three people build this yes. many bricks and you're like and you you do the math and you're like wait a minute so it would take them quite literally 15 minutes yes. and it would take one person five days. Exactly. Exactly. We should be collaborating all the time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm very pro collab these days. I am too. I really, I really never used to be like that. And honestly, not to get too personal, but I think it's my relationship with Sam that has 
really made me realize the value of collaboration. Because I was always like, that's why I did stand up and not improv. That's why I did like anything I've written, I've kind of written on my own. But well, I, I'll tell you something. Two brains is better than one. Definitely. Yeah. But I will hop onto that and say not to be too sentimental about Sam. But like, I think it's because of Sam. Like, you are a good yeah. collaborator. You can't collaborate with just anyone. Hey, I'll take it. I feel like I would hate <laughs> group projects if the vibe just has to be right. You know, you you have to be yeah. talkative, but not too talkative. You have to like, you know, it has to has to have a flow to working together and. Sam, you got it, kid. The, yeah. The moment <laughs> the moment when you realize that you are collaborating with someone who is not a good collaborator, your life flashes before your yeah. eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Because then it's it's uh, you're stuck. You know you're stuck there for like a week even because you're going to have to like check in yeah. more and more. Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys are both incredible to collab with. And I swear oh to God that there are people out there that I don't collab well with. It just so happens <laughs> that you're both perfect and incredible. <laughs> Wow. Well, speaking of collaborating, I think we should collaborate on our first segment. Oh, my goodness. We are being so professional this week. I know. Okay. Michelle, our first segment is called Straight Shooters. And in this segment, we gauge your familiarity with and complicity in straight culture by asking you a series of rapid fire questions to uh, uh, basically this thing or this thing. And uh, the only rule is you can't ask any follow up questions. And uh, that's pretty much it. I love it. I love it, too. George, do you want to kick us off? I would love to do that. OK, Michelle, shooting blanks or looting banks? <laughs> shooting blanks. Okay, Michelle. JPEG or JSTOR? Ooh. JPEG. Okay. Team Edward, Team Jacob, or Team, the third single from Lord's debut album, Pure Heroine? Team Edward. <laughs> <laughs> no further questions. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We need to, we'll, we'll circle back. To, we're going to circle back to that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Experiencing ego death. Or screaming live from New York, it's Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> live from New York, it's Saturday night. <laughs> okay, Michelle. Reading Vanity Fair or <laughs> screaming, watch out for that manatee over there. <laughs> Reading Vanity Fair. Okay. Dying of natural causes or having a natural wine, that's to die for. <laughs> <laughs> Having a natural wine, that's to die for. Okay, Michelle. We are the daughters of the witches you couldn't burn, or we are the Millers starring Jennifer Aniston, not Rose Byrne. That's hard. That's the hardest one so far. Um, I think we are the, the daughters of the witches you couldn't burn. Mm. Mm. Yes, resist. Yes, resist. Okay. <laughs> Rachel getting married, Margot at the wedding, or Wedding Crashers? Oh. Ooh. Uh, I'd say Wedding Crashers. Ooh, wow. Good choice. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, I think that was a flawless and stunning performance. Mm -hmm. And I actually saw patterns. I think that Michelle chose to pick the straighter thing. Is that correct? That's correct. Michelle? Yeah. Wow. Yes. Because people people see it in a different like some people it's like whatever they like more. Yeah. And sometimes you notice that some people pick like the funnier of the two. Like if one is a pun, they'll yeah. pick the pun. But I felt like you were steadfast in your commitment to pick the straighter thing. Well, I listen to the show, and every oh. time mm. I hear the instruction, I'm like. You're supposed to pick the straighter thing, even though I, I'm realizing now that I guess the instructions are up to interpretation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to me, it's always the straighter thing. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, I think I think it's a, it's a giving, you know, back to basics, Christina Aguilera. It is uh, back to the root of what makes this podcast a podcast. Exactly. <laughs> and sometimes we need to be reminded of the things we believe That's in. That's true. Exactly. Especially before or after Christmas, which is when this <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I have a question. In the, the dynamic yeah. of podcast host to podcast guest, who is mother? Mm. I mean, I mean, generally or, or here? Here. Here. Here, I'm definitely are not. Are we your mother. mother or are you our mother? You are my mom, for sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for sure. 
Because there was a moment where I was like, you're kind of being mother when you're like, no, this is how the game works. I was like, no, that's mother. And so it was. Oh, well, I definitely like while you guys are mother, I definitely (laughs) am a rule follower. So it's like. Right. So like, again, like I have I know my rules just like, you know, I came Mm -hmm. with my topic. Did I not like, you know what I'm saying? Like, of course. I prepared. I know my shout out at the end. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, yeah. oh, wow. Yeah. You know who doesn't? Us. <laughs> exactly. OK, so maybe I am mother. <laughs> well, here's what I think. I think and maybe this is just like recency bias. Like I've had this experience recently. To me, you are visiting mother mm. and we are making the guest room nice for you. Yes. Like it's like. <laughs> y- yes. You yeah. are laying out Vanity Fair on my nightstand. I'm laying out Vanity Fair. This is perfect. And it's like, of course, for you, part of you feels like we are mother because you're like, well, I'm in his, my son is all grown up and, I, and I'm in his apartment. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. So in that sense, my son is mother. Right. My son <laughs> is mother, but like, I will always be his mother. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I wow. think we figured it out. I think we figured yeah, it out. That is that's actually that's genius. It. Okay, that makes complete and sense. And it's really complex. It is. Yeah. It's really complex. No, it is. Yeah. Think peace incoming. Okay, I also want to wow. circle back to um, Team Edward, Team Jacob. Um, that was such a visceral mm. um, response. Yeah. yeah. I'm also Team Edward, by the way. Oh, I didn't say I was Team Edward. Oh, what are you? I'm... <laughs> actually, wait. Actually, yes, I am. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I think I am too. I have I've only seen the first movie, but yeah, I mean, Edward's hotter. He's also Edward, like more interesting. Yeah, he's more interesting. I okay, this is like so anti-feminist of me, but I'm sort of just like Edward was there first. Like Jacob, you can't come yeah. steal this guy's gal. Like yeah, I right. guess women aren't property. I guess, but we're reading Twilight right now. Like, <laughs> right, and it's also like, well, he introduced her to to his family. Yeah, like he's being a gentleman. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. Also, he has generational wealth. A hundred percent. All the generations of wealth. Yeah, and also he's like a million years old. Talk about daddy. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Also, like, if I'm going to marry into a family, it's going to be a vampire family, not a werewolf family. And that's just me. Mm. No, it's very true. You know what it is? Vampires are old money. Werewolves are nouveau riche. Exactly. Wow. (laughs) And there it is. If you're going to marry into a family that has some kind of supernatural element, they better be old money. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Wait, Sam, I was going to say, you seemed like you disagreed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not quite. I guess I'm thinking, like, the family I would rather be in would be the werewolf family. They just seemed a little more carefree and there seemed to be like less yeah, drama. Well, you also love bears. Yeah. You, you let, like you, I think I'm not surprised that you are drawn to a werewolf <laughs> more than kind of like a hairless vampire, like a, a pale hairless <laughs> Who, yeah. Who's also like apparently freezing cold. Yeah. Right. And, and hard, I think. Yeah. He's rock hard. <laughs> yeah, he's really, really <laughs> hard. Um, I, yeah, it's just, I feel like the day to day activities of the werewolf family would be more in line with my interests rather than, mm-hmm. wow, the light is really coming in a weird way. So I'm turning my No, camera. it's great. You found your light, mama. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> but you would at least with, okay, so a werewolf, well, it's actually kind of a perfect binary because with a werewolf, you can only hang out during the day. Yeah. And with a vampire, you can only hang out at night. So it's kind of, do you want brunch or do you want nightlife? Wow. I guess in that context, I would go vampire, at least in this stage of my life. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go out, hit the town. Yeah, I want to go out. So given that binary, I go brunch. Like, I go to sleep <laughs> yeah. every night at 11 p.m. Really? It's tough. And then, you know, your husband can go out, exactly. like, become a wolf. Exactly. Like, you don't have to know about no, it. No, exactly. Like, do what you want when I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's fair. That's really fair. Wait. Wow, that's so interesting. Michelle, what time this, did you wake up this morning? Um, I woke up this morning. I slept in t- till nine. Oh, my mm. God. I know. This is actually reminding me, Sam, that like in our Venn diagram in the workplace, like we have a ton of overlap, but the things that we defer on, we like are very different on. Like <laughs> I forgot you're a night owl. Oh, yeah. I need the stuff. Yeah, and you like you like party. I did, a little. Oh boy, does he? Yeah. I'm above it. That's for sure. I, no, exactly. I I yearn to party. I simply can't stay up. Can't stay up. Yeah, 
I yearn to get up early and it just doesn't uh, match my lifestyle currently. Mm. Oh my God. The way I, if I was a morning person, it would quite literally solve all my problems and I would be president of the United States. <laughs> I will say on the days that I wake up at like seven, I'm like, I'm like reading a book in the morning. I'm like doing my NYT crossword puzzle. Oh my you God. know, like I'm killing it. That is such a fantasy. What time is early to you guys? I need to, I can wake up. Like if I'm being responsible, if I'm like my day to day, I wake up at nine. Okay. Yeah. So for, I mean, for the past year and a half, I've had a job where I've had to wake up early. So I wake up at like eight, I would say. Mm -hmm. When I have been in more of a freelance, you know, writer schedule, I would say when I'm being responsible, it's like, nine to ten okay but if i get off the wagon like if i have a weekend where i'm staying out late if i have a bout of insomnia it like i i mean it can start getting bad like i can start like in college for instance i was one of those people who like woke up in the afternoon and would like miss class i mean in a way that i still regret to this day because i'm like it was my one chance (laughs) to go to class I feel that I always like I have always yearned to be a person who could like sleep till noon, but I just can't even when I'm hungover. Last weekend I was hungover and I woke up at seven. No. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. But that's because I think I was I thought I was going to throw up. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't. I didn't. Okay, shout out. (laughs) Um, Should we get into the topic? I would love nothing more. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It's a juicy one. Yeah, I think, I think so, so too. too. It's really nice. We've been kind of like back to basics again. Like recent episodes have been so we've been so good at getting to the root of straight culture there. You know, we did sororities. We did uh, the the one before this. that is going to be golf. And, you know, it's been like really good, uh, you know, just kind of like, what is it at the root? What is the what is the the, the rust at the root? What not rust? What is the phrase I'm looking I'm for? I'm not sure. The rot at the root. <laughs> The rot at the root of straight culture. Never heard of that. So, Michelle, without further either, ado, but I, I love that. Yeah, I kind of just made it up. Um, <laughs> what is your topic for today? My topic of straight culture is the concept of a date night. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. It actually makes me sad just it, like <laughs> contemplating it. It makes me so sad. <sighs> and it's like, I, I, it's like, I've been with my boyfriend now for, for like, um, two years and mm-hmm. have we ever like just planned something that's called a date night no and to that i'm so proud it's just like let's yeah. let's just hang out but like to play and to and to tell friends like i actually can't it's date night <laughs> it's date night yeah i have a uh earth shattering admission you do date night sometimes we do date night but wow. but wouldn't you say that that's you living up to straight culture. You know what I'm I saying? I do think like, when we do it, it feels very heteronormative, like genuinely. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but I need some way to define, like, you know, living in Brooklyn, New York City. Yeah. Your night can be taken by other things so easily that when, like, I have to, like, create a false boundary and be like, I can't, it's a date night. Which yeah. is... It one every time I say that I lose out on jobs. I lose out on <laughs> friendship. People, I people think, oh, I used to think you were cool and interesting. Now I know that you live in Ohio and are you lose followers <laughs> on across all yeah, platforms. Yeah. Op eds are released, taking me down, and they're right. Yeah. Your LinkedIn is suspended. <laughs> <laughs> and but it is hard to because you do need to put up boundaries sometimes and be like. Yeah, I am available technically and I'm out and about even. But yeah, this night is for this thing. I, yeah. I do respect that. And I do respect scheduling and leaving the time open. But maybe it's just the naming of it. Like maybe, you know what I'm of saying? Yeah. It's, no, totally. It's the words date and night together. Yeah, <laughs> it's the naming of it. And it's also I mean, there are two things. First of all, you know. Sam, you're saying your default, if you're free, is like going out, having a good time. But date night, when we're in a date night space, the default is actually like eating a TV dinner in front of the TV silently (laughs) with your partner. Like, that's what they're trying to avoid. It's not like the two, it's not like you and Misha are like, well, rather than going to another 12 hour circuit party, (laughs) we're going to go and have dinner. Right. No, these, this, this is like, okay, 
the husband will put on pants and not sweatpants for one night a month. Right. Uh huh. That's the kind of that's those are the terms we're dealing. I with. agree. I also think it's like when you go shopping, you see a cute sweater, and you're like, oh, this would be great for date night. Like that is sad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see what it's, you're saying. It's like people that don't treat themselves specially normally and have to like mm-hmm. force it. Yeah, a bit. yeah, exactly. Stuck in the confines of their heterosexual relationship. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's also something about like, I mean, by it's almost like date night implies all other nights are don't live up to a date night exactly. where it's like. This is our one chance to be happy exactly. every month. No, it's true. It's like you know, because it's because last night we just watched The Bachelor. Yeah. Tonight we're going to go to Applebee's. Do you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, okay, date night, when you are like straight, you start dating in high school and you date mm-hmm. by going to like, like it's like a big deal to go to like, homecoming dance oh, or prom yeah that's yes. like the most romantic thing you can do in high school and then yes. after that it's marriages <laughs> yeah yeah wait you're so right so date night is almost like toxic nostalgia because you're like i want to go to prom wow yeah. and there it is because you need you need a reason to dress up they're literally chasing the high of prom <laughs> they like the husband gets a corsage for his wife yeah. they're 45 years <laughs> yeah. old you know and then they're going to walmart uh-huh. yeah Yeah, and exactly. I feel like because I follow a lot of um, straight white women on Instagram, those are actually... Well, you have to, legally. Those are my sisters. Like, you know, say what you want. (laughs) (laughs) I would die for them. But every single one of them have a date night, get ready with me, like sort of like, you know, real. And it's always the same, like, black bodysuit, like blazer maybe, and then straight hair. And it's just like, that's what means date night. Yeah. <sighs> I know. It's, um, well, I think maybe what you're, what you're pointing to is the assimilation of a date night. Because you're also supposed to look mm. like other people who have gone on date night. Eggs. Oh my God, you're so right. There it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You have to look like date night. <laughs> <laughs> right? There is a date night uniform. Yes. And like, yeah. it's not like live out loud tonight and like be your truest self. It's like, no, dress like the other women who have date night. It, wait, yeah. what is the outfit for the heterosexual male? Oh, for date I night? can tell you. It's khaki. Yeah. It's khakis. Mm, button up. But sne- but sneakers. Yeah. Yeah. White. Mm-hmm. White Adidas. White Adidas sneakers. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, and a kind of gingham button down yeah getting a button exactly down or a, a polo like a golf polo or something or polo. sure sure if it's spring or and maybe a baseball cap yes and then at the restaurant she's like take your take hat it off, babe. off yeah and he's like you always do this yeah and what I, I, what do you think they're ordering or where, where are we this. eating out where do you think we're eating out yeah okay i know where we're eating well, i actually know where we're eating okay okay right, say it <laughs> so we're in a restaurant that's not a chain but mm-hmm. it could be. It's like yes. it has like That's a exactly great burger it and it has like ribs and like yeah. nachos. But it is called yeah. like the, yeah. Hickory House or something like. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Or even like or even like Tom's like, um, you know, uh, Jeff's place. Yes. Oh, I would actually love that. I would definitely check out Jeff's yeah. place. And the man is ordering the burger, and I this it pains me to say this, but the woman is ordering the grilled fish. Because I was like, salad is too on the nose. No, it's grilled it's fish. It's fish for <laughs> sure. It's fish, and she doesn't. And it, it she, really she can't finish it. It, it. <laughs> it brings me literally no pleasure to report <laughs> that the woman is ordering the grilled fish, and it's not my like. No. Please do not. It's not my biases. I I don't no. want her to order the grilled Absolutely fish. Absolutely not. I want her to get the burger. I'm just telling you, she is ordering the grilled fish. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it when it comes down to it, what else on the menu could it have? She's not getting the pasta. No. No, they gave her a special pink menu for women, and it just has grilled fish <laughs> exactly, on it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, um, speaking of, like, being mother and who's, who is mother and who isn't mother, <laughs> I think... Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I think one of the truest ways to say I am not mother at a restaurant, and this is something I do often, is to, yeah. to um, order a silly pasta. Like order like 
yeah. a Cajun spicy pasta. And that's oh very, my gosh. that says, I am child. You are mother. I am, I am child. child. <laughs> yeah. You know what I will say does make you mother as well? <laughs> yeah. Ordering a pasta for the table. Yes. Wow. You Talk know? about mother. That right. is mother. It's like, it's like I just want to have a taste of this pasta in addition yeah. to my entree. Mm-hmm. Ordering anything for the table, you're immediately not only mother, but a working mother who's a CEO. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But but none of but none of that is happening on day No, night. none of that is happening. There's no there's no there's no identity play happening. They are in their roles. Absolutely not. I'm trying to think, oh, I was gonna think if there's dessert. I don't think there is. Why? Because I think they might go get ice cream later. Oh, oh. and you know what? I like getting ice cream later. I it's do not too. like I'm judging them for getting ice cream later, but ice. I think they look at a dessert menu. And they're like, "Let's just get let's ice just cream get ice later. cream." And it might even it might even be soft serve. I was gonna say, "What's the flavor?" Hmm. Well, I think okay. Well, first of all, what are they drinking? And then we'll do dessert. Thank you. What are they drinking? I'm leaning towards prosecco. Oh, yeah. yeah. That makes sense to me. I, I understand this. They have to start with prosecco. I here's here's the only thing I'll say. About once every four date nights, she starts with a margarita. Yes. Yes. That's a date night that's maybe even on a Friday, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good date night. That's a good <laughs> Wait, now I'm like, wait, what am I doing? And then he will start with like a bourbon or, you know, like, yeah. uh, like a whiskey on the rocks. Yeah. Oh, I think he exclusively drinks bourbon. That's right. <laughs> I, I think he actually might have an issue with alcohol, but. <laughs> no, he's. It's not a dress, <laughs> certainly not on date night. No. And in fact, sometimes she attempts to address it and he's like, just can we just do date he's night? He's like, babe, it's date night. <laughs> it's date night. <laughs> oh, my God. OK, that actually brings up a really good point in that on date night, there is a 50 percent chance they get in a fight. Oh, yes. Because actually, the pressure is on. <laughs> I have a story about this. Please. Please. Um, so for me and my boyfriend's anniversary last year, we did a cooking class, which was Oh, that was also that also could have been a great straight culture topic. I was about to say very straight to do a cooking <laughs> class with your boyfriend. I know sometimes we cosplay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, we got there and this couple came in late. They were like 10 minutes late. And we all thought we were going to be joking like, ha ha, you guys are late. Because, you know, whenever you're at a cooking class with other couples, you all become family. And so they walk in. We think we're going to be joking. They're both mad. She doesn't look at us. And so we're like, okay, clearly they're entering tents. So they put on their <laughs> their aprons. <laughs> and then next thing you know, she storms out. Oh, no. Like we're in the middle of like dicing our onions. She storms out. Then he follows her. They're both wearing their aprons. <laughs> <laughs> and they never come back. <laughs> so They stole the aprons? They stole the aprons. And I think. That was the last time they each saw each other. I think that was a breakup. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. It, it was either a breakup or they fight like this every week. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And you know what I'll say? You know, they each brought back the aprons to their apartments. They haven't thrown them out yet because it seems wrong. Yeah. But every time they look at the aprons, they wistfully, like, she's like, oh, that fucking asshole. Yeah. And, and, and he's, you know. I mean, he can't really form a thought, but he's kind of like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes. But yeah, but you're right. 50, 50, 50 chance of them fighting on date night. A hundred percent. What What are they fighting about? Sam. Oh God. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I'm like, they're fighting about, she doesn't like the grilled fish <laughs> and he is like, don't get mad. And she's like, don't tell me how to feel. Yeah, mm. or and then, and, or he's like he's like then why'd you get the grilled fish and she's exactly and she's like yeah because I was given the pink menu you know like it's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what else did I have to order yeah or or you know what else I think maybe the guy makes an offhanded comment to the waiter about like oh she's on a diet when yes. she orders the grilled fish uh huh uh huh yes. Yeah. And then, but she doesn't immediately address it. But then a few glasses of Prosecco in, she's like, well, you know, you didn't have to say that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And she's right. Exactly. And she's right. No, exactly. Of course she's right. Yeah. But it is kind of like, you know what you signed up for when you started dating Paul or whatever. <laughs> right. Exactly. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. It's tough. 
<laughs> so the man that we are describing is absolutely mm-hmm. so Paul. deeply hot to me. And I know deep in my heart. Sam. No, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I could never actually date a man like that. But this is always where like I, I have famously been jealous of straight women because they have access to the dumbest, horniest straight people women. on earth. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> it's just not fair. But at the same time, I'm like, no, like it is really hard on a day to day level to like not be like able to communicate. Yeah. yeah. And like yeah. have to accept that you will never be able to communicate. Never. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's like having a pet. Like you can't text your cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. And you right. can love. You can love your pet. Knowing that they'll never be a human. And you also know that your pet loves you. You just have to yes. accept that it's the love from a cat. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. You're absolutely right. Um, but back to the <laughs> issue at hand. What flavor ice cream are they <laughs> oh, getting, <right>. Michelle? <laughs> well, it's definitely a cup. It's not a cone. A hundred percent. Let's start there. Never a yeah. cone. Yeah, what are they on vacation? <laughs> You know what? I want to say like mint chocolate chip. Yeah. Oh, that's you are so you are right so for right. That. It's like unfortunate because like you, I think we're all like expecting like this like silly answer, and it's like the truth no, is always like yeah, no. no, yeah, that's it. No, they they didn't get the Earl Grey chocolate chip. No, 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 <laughs> no they didn't. Also, actually, I don't think they're going to exchange. That's actually insane. It's insane to go to exchange after date night. Mm-hmm. I, but I do think it's the same energy as this restaurant where it could be a chain. <laughs> and it's also like their spot. I think the ice cream, like the restaurant, sometimes they take risks, but the ice cream, they're like, well, we have to go to our spot. Absolutely. We always get ice cream. And that's where the romance, I put in quotes, occurs because it's their yes. spot. I think they, they do try other flavors. Mm, oh. But they always get mint chocolate chips. Absolutely. They will, <laughs> they, they, they'll try another flavor. They will like another flavor. They will yeah. want another f- flavor. Yeah. They will get mint chocolate chips. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the big question on everybody's mind, are they hooking up at the end of this night? Yeah, this is the big I one. Think, uh, I think because it's date night, they do. Wow. And I think it's ritual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, are they enjoying themselves? Either one of them. Mm. Don't get Not, me wrong. It's consensual. <laughs> no, it's consensual. <laughs> but it's like maintenance It's a little right. maintenance It's maintenance. It's like how to keep a relationship going. We have to have sex right now. Yeah. Here's a question. The times that they fight, do they have better or worse sex after? Mm. Damn. It is better, unfortunately. Yeah, I think it's better, but they still sleep in separate rooms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like they have sex, then he goes to the couch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. And it's also like they don't kind of like, even though they know deep inside that they have better sex when they fight, they don't like recognize that Mm-mm. and like joke about it Mm-mm. or talk about like makeup no. sex. They don't say. They don't address any of it. No, no, no. They're actually ashamed. Yeah. Of the fact that they have better sex after they fight. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, okay. Sorry. I'm just like I'm. I know this couple right now. Are they mm-hmm. engaged? Well, she wants to be engaged. That, doesn't she? Doesn't she? <laughs> and I think it is coming, but not when she thinks it is. No. No. It's literally like not on his mind. Mm-mm. No. It's there's going to be a huge. I mean, and honestly, if we're being honest, we know that the fights are always kind of about that. Even when yeah, it's, it's a, not brought they're up. They're all proxy fights. Yeah. They're not about the grilled fish. No. Exactly. And it's like, is she happy in this relationship? No. No. Does she want to be engaged, though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why she orders the fish. <laughs> she really thinks, like, if I order the grilled fish a few more times. Yeah, that ring's coming. I'll get the ring. That ring is coming. And it's not going to be the ring she wants, but it'll be yeah. a ring. Yeah. <laughs> And, and you know, she might be dying from mercury poisoning from all the fish, but she will get, get that, that ring. ring. <laughs> she's in the hospital. They're like, I've never seen this much fish in someone's system. No. And she's like, I got the ring. And it's the ugliest <laughs> exactly, ring you've ever seen. Exactly. Exactly. 
Uh, oh man. Well, I hope we get to give a speech at their wedding. Mm, I would. I do too. I would, I would hope to be invited to that wedding. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, because like, let's also just say the best weddings are straight weddings. Sometimes, like, <laughs> that's actually a very good point. Well, that's where you're gonna. <laughs> I went to the craziest straight wedding a couple of months ago, where it was like in New Jersey, where it's like everyone's wearing gowns, like sparkly <laughs> gowns that, that you would wear to prom. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Well, again, I mean, the wedding is the ultimate prom. Exactly. Yeah. It's what it's all leading up to. Exactly. Um. The, okay. So the rece- Wait. What's the thing before? Cocktail hour. Cocktail yeah. hour was just a station of every single cuisine you could ever think of. So it was like a pasta station, a sushi station. There was caviar. Okay, it's giving all-inclusive resort. Yes. Yeah. But then yeah. I was like, okay, this must be dinner. No. Then they opened the door and then into the ballroom, of course. And <laughs> of course. And we have dinner. I don't remember exactly what was for dinner. I don't think it was good, but that's not the point. Yeah. And then the um the thing at what uh the the dessert at the end in addition to um wedding cake was like a Ben and Jerry's cart and then they had like cannolis they had every dessert you can possibly imagine mm-hmm. they definitely spent a hundred thousand dollars on this wedding oh at least easy Whoa. yeah no it, they do love straight straight weddings are the thing is, the food is never actually good, but that boy, the is there thing. a lot of it. Ex- yeah, George, you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> did I? Did I enjoy a single drink I had? Absolutely not. That's the thing. <laughs> you, not a single thing is good. I mean, you really are kind of like you want to just like put pull them aside and be like, "Sweetheart, you, <laughs> calm down for one second. Exactly. It's okay. It's okay. Exactly. Yeah. Put, put that down. Put that shrimp down. Exactly. It's okay. Exactly. We just need one good thing." <laughs> And they're like, and they're like chocolate tower. You're like, no, <laughs> no, sh- 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 no, no, exactly. <laughs> it's almost to the point. I'm like, did you ask the bartenders to make our drinks bad? Because it's like- <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, is that like your policy so that no one gets like too drunk? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whereas then a gay wedding, they'll be like, well, first of all, the entire reception is at a restaurant. Oh my god, yes. Yeah. One of my yeah. good friends, her dream is to um, get married, obviously, privately. And the reception is at Balthazar. How chic is that? Oh, my God. So chic. That is, I, w- <laughs> I mean, to have a reception at a restaurant, I think I really like the more, the older I get, the more I think it is the only way to do I it. I think so, too. Have a small ceremony with just, like, very few friends and family. You don't need your high school friends, like, no. listening to your vows. It's also, like... Why am I going to go through the trouble of, like, finding tables, finding chairs, finding napkins? You know a place that no. has those ready? A restaurant. <laughs> Literally a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's actually, that's the best point I've heard so far. It's like, we don't need to, like, invent a space that has all these things. You can just go to the space that already <laughs> has. Yeah. inventing a restaurant. Right? <laughs> exactly. But, but then here's the thing, to bring it back. You try to tell it to a straight couple, they're like, well... Does not compute restaurant for date night. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> They're like, well, well, this isn't date night. This is wedding. <laughs> wedding. If if wedding is as bad as date night, I will kill myself. <laughs> it, it has to be at venue. Exactly. Wedding venue. Wedding, wedding venue. venue. Exactly. Date night restaurant. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? Because we are allies, mm. we let her have it. We let them. Mm. Oh, we we let her have this ballroom with bad food. Yeah. And a marriage that might not last. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you one thing. Yes, the food is bad, but you know I'm going to go to those pigs and blankets and I'm going to have five of them. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. you know what? I'm going to have a good time. Like, <laughs> sure, the drinks I'm going to have a great horrible. time. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I'm going to, the bartender will be annoyed by me by the end of this wedding and, and I will be happy about that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Because I will order something and go, this is bad. And then I'll ask for another thing. Yeah. And then I'll ask for another thing. <laughs> exactly. Wait, that was act- like literally me exactly. I'm like, okay, so the white wine tastes like rubbing alcohol. Let me try easier. Let me try easier. Like rum and Coke. Cool. The Coke no. is like yeah. not Coke. <laughs> 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 like where did they get this Coca-Cola? Like. <laughs> It, yeah, it actually is shocking because you're like, I feel trapped. Like, every, it's a house of mirrors. Nothing is what it seems. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> oh, man. The wine at weddings. And again, I know, you know, we sound very um, whatever, particular. 
the wine at weddings, you're like, is this resin? Like, <laughs> is this made by bees? No, exactly. But and I'm always like, wine should be the safe option. Like, but mm-hmm. oftentimes, again, rubbing no. alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Oh, but I will say the one thing that is always good at a wedding like that are the rolls. Yes. <laughs> Could not agree more. <laughs> yeah. And oftentimes that is my entire dinner. <laughs> I actually think the more here's my here's the I, I'm actually just having this realization because I had mentioned pigs and blankets. The more bread based something is, yeah. the safer it is at a wedding. Absolutely. Mm. Do you want to go for the rolls? You want to go for the uh, you know, if there's a sort of I mean, again, pig and blanket, a sort of pastry yes. type thing. If there's a little thing that's like a pastry, but with like some cheese and, you know, a spinach, you know, yes. like something like that. Yes. I will also say usually the mashed potatoes are good as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Again, that's true. oftentimes my entire meal. Mm-hmm. The chicken will be rubber. The will steak be will be brown. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> um, I have something while we like wrap up on the date night. I'm curious, like, I want to sort of this is us it, um, where, like, cut to 20 years in the future after this date night that we've mm. described, they're going on a new date. What has changed? Yeah. Oof. <laughs> this is a wonderful Well, I guess question. they're wearing rings. <laughs> 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 and she, like, she's like, well, that's something. Does she still order the fish? Uh. Um... She might switch it up to the chicken. I think it's Actually, chicken. No, it's, the, I that think is it's the chicken. smartest thing you've said. I <laughs> <laughs> can't believe it. It's so true. She will switch to the chicken. <laughs> She's like, well, I'm married now. I can't be a whore. And get the fish. Right. I'm a married woman. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Yeah, she's going to get the chicken. And instead of the burger, he gets the steak. But I think yes. I think yeah. I think now we might be at a chain. Uh, we might be at a chain. Yeah. Wow, you are so at a chain and, right. And I'll tell you this, she's getting a margarita every time. Oh, every oh yeah. Time. Oh yeah. His, his maybe has a problem with alcohol is full blown. It's full blown. <laughs> Her margarita, the one exciting thing is that she always gets a different one. You know, there's a cucumber one, a jalapeno oh, one, a blood totally. orange one. She always gets a different margarita. Sometimes she'll mix them. Sometimes they'll be like, oh, can, <laughs> yeah. oh, can you mix the mango and pineapple? <laughs> <laughs> She's doing full on mixology at the table. He's blackout drunk. <laughs> and they have two kids. But you know what? She got she got the ring. And they have two kids. Oh, yeah. Fully two kids. And they're doing, like, okay in school. Yes. Yeah, they're doing okay in school. Absolutely. Absolutely. And guess what? Those kids are straight. And they're looking forward to yeah. the big prom. <laughs> they are. And they the cycle are. continues. And, you know, ultimately, everyone is, like, pretty much satisfied. I was going to say, because... Happiness is overrated, and I think she learned mm. that years ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she would never frame it as such. No. No. But that is what she learned. No. Exactly. Yeah. She's learned, like, gratitude rather than, like... Well, she has her gardening is the thing. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, gratitude is, is fully it. Yeah. She's grateful for her and... children. She's grateful for the ring. Mm-hmm. And I bet their home is... Like reasonable, like I bet it's like kind of nice. Yeah. Oh, fully, yeah. It's not IKEA. Like they've upgraded. You know, yeah. there's some Crate and Barrel in there. There's some restoration hardware. Totally. Um, I do think a lot of the furniture is from Macy's, but hey, yeah, I have some furniture for it's quality of stuff. Of course, quality <laughs> stuff. Of course, of course, it's quality stuff. And you know what? I'll say this: he does. Sometimes wear a blazer to, to date night. Yeah. And he used to not do that. Yeah. He, and now he Yeah, does. he doesn't wear the hat anymore. No. To date night. He doesn't wear the hat, but and he wears a blazer. Yeah. yeah. With a polo shirt. And he, tuck, he With tucks a polo in shirt. his polo shirt. Yeah. 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 And he's still hot as hell. Yeah. <laughs> and and wait, are they still hooking up? Last question. I actually think yes. I actually yeah. think the sex is better now. I think so too. I think that they fight, but sh- he doesn't leave the room now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does. No, no, They gave up on that a long time ago. After kid number one. Exactly. They were like, what you, I mean, yeah. And I think they're like a little more grateful for each other, you know? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're grateful for each other, but also she has learned how to tune him out. Like, yeah. he doesn't leave the room. He can leave the room in her mind. Right. Exactly. Like, she can decide when he's there or when he isn't. Yes. It doesn't matter physically where he is. Yes. Well, a lot of her, a lot of their marriage is just, is just her, like, astral projection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She has, like, the same powers as, like, a Buddhist monk. Like, yeah. <laughs> and you know what I'll say? And I'll say this her friends, her single friends, are jealous yes. of her. And they're like, well, you know, um, Bridget found someone and she's really happy. Mm-hmm. So it can happen yeah, for me too. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because you know what? Being sort of content is better than being divorced in her mind. A hundred percent. Well, Paul and Bridget, yeah. they are just such a beautiful cu- couple. Paul and Bridget. I just want to say, you know, I feel real a lot of affection. I, I feel so say, close to them. Like, uh, I really feel I close. Actually, I actually think they figured it out. Like <laughs> I do too. It's like kind of beautiful. It, yeah, I'm really, I'm honestly genuinely happy Me too. for them. And I think, I think their kids have a good head on their Absol- shoulders. Like, And they have like a good idea. Like marriage doesn't have to be happy. Um, right. Like I don't, I don't think that they would call their parents happy, but I think that they say that their parents have a good marriage. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I really, the way I can see these people, like the way that if I had <laughs> like, Skill, like if I could draw, I could draw them. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't well, wait to go to their wedding with you guys. I know. Oh my god, it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be so, so much fun. fun. They have a discount code at the hotel, but it's only five percent <laughs> off. Say, <laughs> oh, don't even get me started on reserving a block of rooms. I was oh, like, please. oh, so they're free? literally the biggest scam like, out no, there. No, you just have to pay yeah. and you get a little discount. Unbelievable. Oh, right. Yeah. I'm good, thanks. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Block of rooms. <laughs> well, I mean, should we do our final segment? I think it's time. I have to say, I the way that this episode will be optioned for a TV I series mean, uh, cannot be overstated. <laughs> uh, gosh. I mean, this is more involved than like the woman that pretended she had cancer to be on Grey's Anatomy. Like, we, yeah. Oh, yeah. And no one got hurt, can I say? And no one got hurt. <laughs> this episode is actually what Fleischman is in trouble is based on. <laughs> Truly, coming to FX soon, honestly. Yeah, it's coming to FX, honey. I watched the shit out of that. Oh my God, I can't wait. I'm li- I'm going to watch this weekend. I'm going to binge yes. it with my mom. <laughs> All right, um, Sam, Okay. ready for the final uh, segment? Oh, I yes. can introduce, since you Thank introduced you. the first one. Okay, Michelle, our final segment is called Shoutouts. And in this segment, we pay homage to the classic straight art form of a radio shoutout. And we give a shout out to something that is making us say Slay Queen <laughs> this week. And you know what? I just thought of one. I can go first. Please go for it. Um, what's up, Christmas freaks and New Year's gals and holiday hoes out there <laughs> celebrating whether it's the week before Christmas, the week after Christmas, whether you're listening on New Year's Day. I have a little tip for you. I want to give a shout out to kind of surprising everyone in the room by showing up wearing a Santa hat. You, it seems cliche and it seems like it's been done before, but when you're the one wearing the Santa hat, everyone is obsessed with you. It actually is weirdly, I don't want to say flattering, but it makes you look kind of sexy. Like it, there's something about it where people like want to talk to you. It is subtle. You're not like showing up with an ugly Christmas sweater where you're like, oh God, this guy is like going to talk to us about whatever. You're just wearing a Santa hat. It's a little, you know, it it can be anything from Mariah Carey kind of sexy all the way to like a, if you're like a larger man, it can be a kind of Santa's hot kind of thing like mama, mommy is kissing Santa Claus type thing. It really can be whatever you make of it. It's kind of like the little black dress of Christmas. Wow. Apparel. So get out there, buy a Santa hat. They're not expensive. I actually bought one last year and I still have it and I cannot wait to whip it out. Um, Buy a Santa hat and show up to the holiday party wearing it. Or better yet, show up with it in your bag, go to the bathroom, put it on, come back. Everyone is freaking out. Someone just fainted because they can't believe how iconic you're being by wearing a Santa hat. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and Happy Hanukkah, babe. Wow. That That is it. That was really amazing. That was impressive. To wear a Santa hat says so much about you, but, like, how fun you are. You know what I'm saying? I agree. I think it's, like, you would think that it's, like, you know, um, 
you would think it's kind of like main character energy yeah. or something, but it's not. You're just fun. You're fun in a safe exactly. way. Exactly. It's like we all have to be at this holiday party. Let's have a little fun, why don't we? Yeah. Yeah. I almost think it's a rejection of uh, main character syndrome. You're like trying actively to to p- take people's guard down and say, you know, I don't need to be yeah. cool. You don't need to be cool. Like we're family because we're at the same holiday yeah. party. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. Wow, that's <laughs> such a great one. Yeah, I, I, uh, that was so good that I actually have nothing that could even somewhat compare. And so I'm just gonna lean into it. What's up, everybody? Woo! I want to give a huge shout out to being cold. Being cold is a feeling that a lot of people think is bad. People associate it with negative thoughts. But I have actually learned that being cold can be very grounding. Um, And guess what? When you're cold, you get to bundle up and you get to be cozy and you get to wear those sweaters. My apartment is too hot all the time. I have uh, mounds, piles, mountains of sweaters that I do not get to wear because my apartment is hot. When I get to be cold, it's a luxury. It is something that, you know, what with everything going on global warming wise, we'll be dead soon. So, hey, I'm enjoying being cold. I love the snow and I love wearing sweaters. And if that's a problem, then you um, need to to, to to read a book and find a, a new perspective, quite frankly. Yes. Reading is so powerful these days. XOXO, Sam. Wow. Woo. Wow. I think to bring it back to global warming was so, <laughs> it was smart, so smart because it's make you're making a political statement and you are Greta Thunberg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I yeah. think you also just officially came out as Team Edward. <laughs> <laughs> He's cold, baby. That is a really He's good point. Cold, baby. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah, a good point. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, I thought I had one, but I'm changing it at the very last second. I love that. Love it. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> What's up, my freaks and absolute geeks? Woo! Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Woo! Happy New Year. I want to go ahead and shout out Mario Kart 8. That shit is actually <laughs> my jam. I bought a Switch during the pandemic when everyone else did. And yeah, I didn't touch it. But recently in my freelance life, I've had nothing to do but play Mario Kart. And holy shit, that is fun. Did you know that you can like drift and stuff and go faster? Oh, honey, I know. I learned how to drift. And yeah, I feel really cool because I could do that. And it's really fun. I always choose to be Luigi because I think that Luigi is the unsung hero of the Mario Kart franchise. Uh, Down with Mario, all rise Luigi. Um, Side note, play Luigi's Mansion 3, another great game on Nintendo. (laughs) I'm coming out as a gamer girl, although those are the only two games that I play, but Mario Kart 8 is so fun. There's, you can switch up the, the comms, you can switch up the levels, it can be easy, it can be hard. You can do it while watching TV. It's the best thing out there at m- this moment in time. So, hey, if it's before uh, Christmas, ask for that from Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers! Woo! Woo! <laughs> wow. I mean, I... I have played so many hours of Mario Kart. It's absolutely insane. I feel like I'm so late to it, obviously, but I'm like, wow. Okay, now I get why people love video games. Yeah, they're really fun, actually. Yeah. Wait, George, what's your stance on video games? I, to be honest, I, I have such an addictive personality that I actually can't allow myself to play. I understand. <laughs> I under- I'm like very in and out. Like it's like like two weeks ago, all I did was play. I used to dream in Mario Kart. I'm. That's. <laughs> to say but i would dream in like blue shells and green shells <laughs> <laughs> i've had that before i've absolutely had that before i was just introduced to a new mobile game this is not you know this is phone iphone yeah. games matthew my boyfriend was playing a game called color sort Ooh. and it quite literally is there are little almost like they look like little test tubes and they each have colored marbles in them and the goal is to have all of them have only one color marbles. Ooh, that sounds fun. And I actually 
he was playing it and I just like took his phone from him and played it for a little bit. And I was like, I already feel like what I imagine addicts yeah. feel. Mm-hmm. Like I just, I can't allow myself <laughs> that to That is play fair. It. That is so fair. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But I'm going to have to know the name of that again so I can download it. Tell me. Collar <laughs> Sword. <laughs> sword. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Michelle, thank you so much for doing the pod. Uh, this course. has been a damn What fun. a treat. Thank you so much for having me. I had so much fun. And Michelle... Happy New Year. Happy, <laughs> Happy New Year or Christmas or wherever we or are. Christmas. Or Christmas. You know. <laughs> okay. Great. Bye. Bye.